What's going on, YouTube? JT is born here, and welcome back to another edition of After the Movie. Currently in the parking lot right now. Just got done watching Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, or Godzilla Kong, The New Empire, the latest film in Legendary's Monsterverse. Now, I'm going to generally keep this one spoiler free, uh, as about as much as I can. There's a lot that I do want to discuss, uh, but I'm going to definitely be seeing the movie again a few times this weekend, I'm sure. Or maybe I'll have a spoiler section in this video. I don't know, because I want to get some other people on to kind of talk about this thing some more, because. My goodness, that was a, a pretty wacky, over-the-top Godzilla film. Um, I actually think I enjoyed this one a little more than Godzilla vs. Kong. Uh, King of the Monsters still remains my favorite within the MonsterVerse, but I think this was a pretty fun time overall. So, um, Godzilla the Kong New Empire, it is the fifth film in the MonsterVerse, technically sixth, seventh, like the seventh entry, if you're counting the t two TV shows that came out recently. Um, the storyline this time around, Godzilla and Kong are forced to team up to stop an undiscovered threat hidden within our world, which is the Scar King and his ultimate titan weapon, Shimo. And other monsters show up. We have Kong, we have Suko, we have other titans that have appeared within Legendary's MonsterVerse, although very briefly, and a few other things as well, uh, like graphic novels and like brief appearance in King of the Monsters and all that too. Like, we get a, there's a lot of titan action in this thing. Like, Godzilla doesn't just fight... Scar King and Suko, if you will. There's there's a few other Titans. Uh, there was Silo, which you've seen in like you know some clips online, but there's another Titan, which is a nice surprise to kind of see in the movie as well. So what did I think overall? I did have a pretty good time with this one. Now I do want to emphasize too, like as the movie kind of there there's an issue with my. I went to see this in IMAX. There was an issue with my screening in a way. Like there was an issue with like the projector kind of like before the movie started like the trailers are, you know you have trailers and all that too screen clarity fine all that but then like it's like once like once this next trailer kind of started at one point uh the screen went incredibly dim and i was very concerned with this because i'm like no no no, don't mess with my movie experience i want to experience this movie in imax this is why i spent the extra money to go see this thing in imax in the highest of picture qualities so then i have to go run out before the movie officially starts and tell them hey uh something's going on with the brightness of your screen it just got incredibly dim and like you could still kind of make things out like it, it didn't really get fixed till i think like 15 20 minutes into the movie i feel like is when it kind of went away but like uh for like the opening and all that it was like it was definitely dimmed down quite a bit like i got a light source right here imagine this like you know like shadowed silhouette like that and it kind of hurt like the opening of the movie for me because like i'm not getting the full experience uh because I, I know it's a lot clearer quality because i've seen like the trailers and all that so the opening stuff on hollow earth and it's like uh it's kind of making it hard to see so that like affected my experience just a little bit uh i'm sure it's better on like repeat viewings and all uh, but what did I really like about this film is a lot of it is centered around like focusing on the Titans and not necessarily when they're fighting. There's a lot of good nonverbal visual storytelling where there's large sequences without any dialogue, but you can kind of understand what's all going on here. There's definitely some influence from things like War of the Gargantuas or Son of Godzilla. Uh, like, especially the sequences between Kong and Suko and Scar King. Now, Suko, to me, was probably the MVP of the film, if I was being honest. Uh, he's a little feisty one, and it definitely had some laughs in there. Uh, I won't give away, really, what his intro was, but you've kind of seen clips of it online. But let's just say, like, he's used for something, and I laughed super hard in the theater. This is definitely the funniest within the films of the MonsterVerse. Um, like, I laughed quite a bit <laughs> he's utilized in his first real sequence where he's interacting with Kong. But there's also a lot of good moments, too, where it's him and Kong just kind of interacting. Like, there's a scene where they're just kind of, like, uh, like hunting together, like Kong kind of bringing him along on this journey. Uh, he's not necessarily a character that's willingly going with Kong because he's grown up under Scar King's kind of rulage, and you can kind of tell Kong sees a bit of himself uh, in Little Suko, but Kong is such a lovable character in this film. Like, you get to see really how he's kind of grown and evolved as the series has gone on. Like, I mean, he interacts with all these different apes who at first try to attack him, but Kong is still trying to, like, help save them because, like I said, um, even apes that attack him, like, one's gonna go, like, fall, and Kong still tries to, like, attempt to save this other ape's life, if you will. Just goes to show, like, how kind of a character he kind of is within this thing. There's all sorts of titans and various things located with Hollow Earth. We get to explore uh, the Eevee tribe and kind of their origins, like, at the center of, like, the Earth and kind of the subterranean um, area, if you will. And, like, that stuff was really cool. We get to see the Iwi tribe, and we get more into, like, the origins of these titans. Not necessarily the origins, but kind of stuff that went on in, like, ancient times. 
Uh, there is another character that fans kind of already know is in the movie, like a, favorite, a fan favorite Toho creation, uh, who I guess was originally something else, and then they kind of changed it. Uh, and you can kind of tell a little bit because it's like, but it's not in a way where it like, if you didn't know, you're like, okay, this character is in here. But like some of the stuff with, you know, with the lore feels a little bit different and disconnected from some of the stuff within King of the Monsters to an extent, but it's not enough to kind of take away from thing. When this character does show up, it is really cool and it's very immaculate and beautiful looking. Uh, another strength too are, there are some really inventive fight sequences. Uh, there's one that's like all takes place within like zero gravity and to me that was the the action scene highlight of the film like the stuff with zero gravity i thought was awesome uh because it's it's a whole unique setting for a titan battle and you get to see like the team of you know godzilla and kong working together there's other titans involved and you know you got scar king and shimo like scar king the trailers don't really do him justice i feel like he definitely has a lot of personality and you can get really those menacing qualities to him uh that you can't really like see like on screen or like the trailers haven't really done justice and I thought that was a lot of fun and like he's definitely an asshole uh but you can see why he is a threat like he's not like as threatening as Sega and he really only kind of gets to like the surface earth like when you see the stuff in the trailers and they're fighting in Brazil a lot of it's centered around hollow earth stuff um but like that stuff is still kind of cool and like Shimo is like awesome looking like the whole design and the size is and scale the scope of things and there's a lot in hollow earth that like the trailers aren't necessarily showing like there are some titans that have been down there that are much much larger than godzilla and kong have ever been i'll say that um in terms of the human cast dan stevens is pretty likable like they kind of make fun of him like uh, call him like ace ventura at one point i got a big laugh out of me i think he plays well off of bernie quite a bit i mean bernie has some laughs in there too uh, you have Eileen Andrews and Gia. Eileen is kind of more so there for exposition. It's just kind of her being a mom to Gia. Gia still kind of has her heart-to-heart relationship with Kong, although I think the strength was more showcased in the last film as opposed to this one. Um, I think Trapper, like I said, Dan Stevens, probably the standout with, with the human cast for sure. Gia is still good in the bit she's in it, but you don't really feel her impact. I mean, she, she has an important part of the story like reconnecting with the Eevee tribe and a lot of the movie definitely feels a little bit like journey to the center of the earth at times and that stuff's really cool uh but most importantly like how is Godzilla in this film now Godzilla's in it like he's kind of like sprinkled throughout the film like he, he's not in there like nearly as much as Kong like he's not given as much to kind of do um you do see him evolve you do see him fight a few other monsters you get the little bit in Rome there's a little bit of a battle in Antarctica um, but the fight sequence is like, I feel like sometimes the pacing with this film, it moves at almost too quick a pace at times. Like it starts out like kind of slow a little bit in some ways, but like I said, there's a lot of good sequences of Kong just kind of hunting. And I think too, my viewing experience was a bit tampered by the screen projection to where it was like, uh, what's going on here? I can't really see it. It's like I'm watching 2014 at home at times, but like a little less impactful. Uh, but yeah, with Godzilla, like I said, you get a few fight sequences there. But because sometimes they move at such a fast pace, um, it's kind of hard to make out some things that are going on. And like I said, I think too, like when the Titans show up, because we're so kind of used to them now, you don't really feel as much of an impact when they're on screen as you didn't say something like King of the Monsters or Skull Island or even the 2014 film. Because like I said, we're kind of used to them like as just kind of these standard characters, like the wow factor. There's still a wow factor there, but it's, it's not quite as much as I feel like it kind of used to be because uh, you don't really feel as much the scale at times. And, like, there's instances where I understand it, like, where they're in Hollow Earth, if you will, where it's told from the perspective of the Titans. Like, that still very much works because we're showcasing it from within their world. But when you get to kind of the surface world, there's a few instances where you don't really feel it at, like, the weight and scale as much. So it's kind of like a bit of a balancing act. So um, Godzilla's still a bit of a jerk this time around, uh, like, from Godzilla versus Kong. Although, this time around, you kind of, you still understand, like, what he's doing. He's kind of cleaning house on the surface world. Uh, he still does not like Kong very much, uh, as evidenced by this film. Like, there's moments where Kong's trying to communicate to him, like, whoa, whoa, bro, whoa, chill, chill, I need your help or something. But, like, it's still, like, <laughs> in a way, like, Godzilla still just doesn't care. He's still kind of angry. Until something kind of, like, we know changes his mind, because we know they're going to be fighting in Hollow Earth, and I won't say what it is, but I think fans will probably pick up on it. Like, that's a good scene, and, like, the action sequences, like, in Egypt, there's one move that's really... <laughs> Like, they, they pull some WWE-type moves right here, or pro wrestling stuff in general. Like, there is one sequence... I mean, this they, they, you know they're going to fight in Egypt because you see it in the trailer, but, like, where a, a monster is given a superplex off the top of a pyramid, and it's not who you think is giving it. Like, the, it's... I, I got a good chuckle out of that stuff. And, like I said, the stuff in Hollow Earth is, like, pretty cool, especially go to the subterranean stuff, and you, it feels, like I said, very journey to the center of the Earth at times. Um, 
The final action sequences, like I said, you get the Hollow Earth gravity stuff, and then, of course, you get the stuff in Brazil. I, I feel like it does kind of rush itself when you get to Brazil. I mean, coming off GVK, which, you know, it's like the whole Hong Kong fight, but that felt like it, you know, it kind of took breaks, if you will, but you've kind of felt a little bit more. They're not in Brazil, like, as much as you kind of would expect at times, and I'm trying to get to this without vague, because, like, it's kind of like, once something happens, like, it's kind of nonstop action until the end. And I think this kind of suffers some of the same issues with, like, GVK, where it need I think it needed a little bit more moments to kind of slow down, but they're moving at such a quick pace, and like, ah, oh, here's this, here's this, here's this, that, and it's a lot of fun, uh, and you get some really crazy action bits, too. Like I said, the, the Zero Gravity fight, I think, is really awesome. Um, you kind of see it a little bit in the trailers, but it, like, there's a lot in this movie that's not showcased in the trailers. It's, like, kind of done justice, um, but yeah, like I said, there's some cool stuff in there. Sugo, to me, was probably the main highlight of the film. I do wish Wingard and that would give Godzilla a little bit more attention in these last two films. Uh, Kong has gotten plenty, and I feel like his arc's almost kind of complete at this point, given what kind of conspires in this film. Uh, but I feel like King of the Monsters still gave Godzilla his best showcasing within this series. And like I said, it's so willing to kind of move at such a quick pace. Um, but there's still, like I said, there's a lot of character focus on Godzilla. We need kind of more of those, like, quieter, like, moments, if you will. So, that would kind of help him out a little bit more as a character. We got those in Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, and we got that in King of the Monsters, but in, like, GVK and GXK, there is kind of one moment, at least here, that you, you do get to see. It is pretty cool, but like I said, it's, it's done at such a fast pace that you don't really, Godzilla's impact on screen doesn't feel, like, as impactful as it kind of should, because it's moving at such, like, a quick pace at times when he's in here and out. Um, it needs to be a little bit more of a buildup, I think, to kind of have him in the movie, uh, which I think would have made it a little bit stronger. But like I said, the movie moves at such a fast pace. It's like boom, 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 here, if you will. So but like I said, it is a fun film. Um, like I said, the opening was affected by my theater projection experience, uh, but it is also a very funny movie as well. Like in terms of the MonsterVerse, this is the funniest film within that universe. Uh, there's some really funny stuff, like I said, with Kong and some of the other apes that kind of had me laughing my ass off quite a bit in the theater. Um... And like I said, I don't want to get into too many spoilers at times, but there's a lot of, like, really good, like, nonverbal bits where you know what's going on. And, um, like I said, it's, it's with Kong. Like I said, Kong and Suko are kind of the hearts of the movie. Uh, Suko especially uh, was probably my favorite, uh, if you will. So, um, I'm saying ooh-ah like I'm Jeff Goldwyn quite a bit. And I'm trying to be vague. I want to get into heavier spoilers, but I'll probably say that for another video. I mean, I've kind of only mentioned things that have gone on really in the trailers without giving too, too much away. So... Godzilla Kong the New Empire, I'm definitely going to see it again, probably tomorrow or like this weekend or something, uh, but I had a really good time with it, it's a lot of fun, uh, maybe I liked it a little bit more than GBK at times, King of the Monsters still remains my favorite monster or some, I think the score could have been a little bit better this time around, but Junkie XL is not as good as Bear McCree, I think that's a pretty unanimous decision, now the, the songs that they use, like that Wingard brings in the movie is like, like an 80s soundtrack with music, uh, like, they use, like, Twilight Zone. There's another one I can't remember off the top of my head that Trapper plays when there's something in Hollow Earth. And uh, the songs, like I said, they definitely get you pumped up and amped up, ready to go for when, like, it's time, if you will, for, like, some of the awesome moments. So, uh, and look, in terms of where they go from here, I mean, there's so many endless possibilities now that you got, like, you know what, I can't say it, uh, based on the way this movie ends, if you will. So, it, it leaves me wondering where they could go next. Uh, it, it's kind of like they have free range to do whatever they want at this point. But there, there is, like I said, some funny stuff, especially with Godzilla and kind of where he's at, you know, in terms of like the end of the movie. I know they've talked about doing a third one with Wingard and we'll see what happens. My audience seemed to enjoy this one and I'm sure like reception is kind of going to be all over the place because Minus One just came out. But then like there's people who just want like the crazy wackiness. If you want crazy wacky Godzilla, this is a movie to turn to. If you want something that's more serious, then something like Minus One will be more your speed. But this one is just going in there. It wants to entertain you. And I feel like once they kind of get into Hollow Earth, that's when the movie really kind of picks up. Because, like, before that, it's like, okay, we're kind of setting the stage for things. It's a little slow at times and not as exciting as I feel like it could be. But then once they kind of get down there with their crew and start exploring things, it starts feeling journey to the center of the Earth. Ask, that's when it gets a lot more exciting and awesome. So, but uh, anyways, that's all I really have to say about this film. What did you think of it? If you've had the chance to, I'm trying to keep super vague. I'm going to do a spoiler discussion with some people at some point. I'm sure I'm going to see it again. But uh, post your comments down below. Be sure to like this video, share with your friends, subscribe to your channel for more content, the buff notifications. Uh, I'm definitely going to check it out again because I, I, there's more that I really want to say, but I don't want to fully get into in this video. So we'll just leave it at that. But anyways, uh, Team Godzilla all the way. 
and I guess Team Suko now, he was probably, like I said, my favorite uh, within the film. So, but uh, yeah, all right, I've run on long enough. Thanks so much for watching. As always, take care now. Bye-bye then, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.